What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Mitch back here with another fantasy football video. And in this video, I'm going to give you my draft board for wide receivers in the 2018 season. So these are my tier rankings, my round by round rankings for the wide receivers this fantasy season. I'm going to try and help you win a fantasy title this year. And the link is in the description for the wide receiver rankings for 2018. My personal draft board, this isn't off anybody else, this is just my personal rankings, how I'll be drafting these wide receivers this upcoming season. So make sure you go download those, go study them up, print them out if you need to bring them to your draft, and get ready. Uh, beside their name, there's the current ADP. So average draft position, if you don't know what ADP means, beside their name, on the video so you guys know where they're being drafted currently where I have them being drafted personally and then you can kind of compare and go about your fantasy strategy that way so let's start off in the first round with basically the no-brainers in fantasy football usually as opposed to the running back position the running back position does tend to be a little bit riskier which is in a way kind of the commonplace but also a little bit of a myth um, the wide receivers do, are also risky. It's just not the top wide receivers. The top wide receivers, the first round wide receivers, the first second round wide receivers are usually the safest bets. They're usually the guys that basically don't miss and they're almost always where, where you draft them, they end up being in value. So unless they get hurt, obviously. So in the first round, I have Antonio Brown at the top of the list. Antonio Brown is currently going in the middle of the first round in fantasy drafts. And I think that's probably where he should be going. That's where I would take him. I would probably take him fifth overall. Now with Antonio Brown, I wouldn't even, if it's a PPR league, I wouldn't even argue if you picked him first overall. He's that valuable. He's that good of a player. And he's Antonio Brown. I mean, this is the only receiver over the past few years that has been just out of this world consistent, out of this world good in terms of statistics. Um, he stayed on the field. He's pretty much always healthy, and he's going to give you fantasy points every single week. He's virtually unguardable. No team really matches up with him very well. No corner can shut him down, so you know Antonio Brown's always going to give you points. Um, that being said, I would still draft the top four running backs over Antonio Brown this season because I believe that those running backs that are able to get all those carries all those catches and all that production are a little bit more valuable than even Antonio Brown at the wide receiver position that's just my personal preference Antonio Brown I would take fifth overall in drafts as the top receiver then we're moving on to number two um, at number two I currently have DeAndre Hopkins but I could definitely switch DeAndre Hopkins with Odell Beckham. They're pretty much the same for me at number two and three. Um, the reason why currently I have DeAndre Hopkins at number two is because of his production when Deshaun Watson was on the football field. When Deshaun Watson was on the football field last year, he was out of this world, amazing, arguably the best receiver in fantasy football. Now, the reason I may switch Hopkins with Odell is because I do trust Eli Manning a little bit more to remain healthy. And also, I believe that Odell is a better overall receiver than DeAndre Hopkins. He's harder to stop. He's harder to guard. He's a better route runner. He's more electric in the open field. I believe Odell is a better player. But when it comes to fantasy football, I think DeAndre Hopkins is about as consistent as it gets. Of course, even without Deshaun Watson last year, he still put up solid production for you. He proved he could do it no matter the quarterback and still put up statistics. He's just once in a while, not going to break those big plays the same way Odell does. Now, Odell doesn't have the same consistency at the quarterback position in Eli as Watson is for, for Hopkins, if Watson is healthy, that is. In terms of their offenses, uh, Pat Shermer is coming in. I think that's going to be a big-time help for Odell Beckham. He's one of the better offensive coaches in the league. And honestly, Odell's never had a good offensive coach ever in his career. So it's definitely going to open up just the ways that they use him in New York. And for DeAndre Hopkins, he's a guy that's a little bit more consistent in terms of he's going to get the catches. Deshaun Watson loves him. It's basically the only place to go other than Will Fuller on Houston. And with New York, they do have other targets like Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram, uh, Saquon Barkley, two pass two outside of Odell. So that's why I have Hopkins a tad bit higher, but they're both excellent and they're both kind of at the same level for me. 
And then fourth receiver for me is Julio Jones this year. It's pretty crazy that a receiver that has put up the most 1,400 yard seasons in a row is fourth in fantasy football, but that's the case for Julio Jones. There's a couple question marks with Julio Jones coming into this season when there's not for Hopkins and Odell and Antonio Brown. Julio is dealing with a contract situation that I'm sure will be resolved, but he is still dealing with that at this current point in time. Also, you have to deal with Julio's injury history. Yes, Odell was injured last year, but when Odell is healthy, he's healthy. And it seems like when Julio is playing, he's usually banged up and he is getting a little bit older and you could see that kind of becoming an issue with his older years, very much the same way that Calvin Johnson the way that kind of derailed his career and he ended up retiring because of his size and his freakish athleticism, it doesn't really match up for a long career. Um, With Julio Jones though, like I said, this guy is ridiculous. He's one of the greatest receivers of all time. Um, He's arguably the most athletic, athletically gifted receiver in the NFL and he's pretty much unguardable as well. Now they did bring in Calvin Ridley who may take away some of his target share, but I think Julio is pretty much a virtual lock for a wide receiver one season. You're going to have no problem picking him in the second, early second round, maybe even the late first round. I'm picking him probably in the second round. I think that's actually a great value for him considering in recent years, he's gone in the early first, mid first. So now you're getting him at a price that's a lot cheaper. I think that might even mean that it's a value for Julio Jones in round one, but you still got in the back of your mind a couple of those things lingering with Julio Jones. In round number two, I'm going to start it off with Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen is my fifth wide receiver coming off the board for fantasy football if I'm drafting because of the amount of targets he's going to get. Philip Rivers absolutely loves Keenan Allen, and I don't see why not. He's arguably the best route runner in the NFL. The way that he just, you talk to cornerbacks, the way that corners talk about Keenan Allen and trying to defend him, it's like defending an alien. The way he runs routes is like, he runs them so different from everybody else that he's able to set you up with two or three moves and then just burn you. He's so hard to stop in that way, and Philip Rivers has garnered a huge rapport with Keenan Allen. He's one of the better uh, third down receivers in the NFL. He's a go-to guy. He might get the most receptions in the league. He might get the most targets in the league. Yes, he has a lot of other targets in in LA um, with Phillip Rivers, but I believe that Keenan Allen is the go-to guy when it matters. And he's, he's going to remain that way for 2018. So I'm a big fan of Keenan Allen. And the only real question mark he has is if he can stay healthy for another 16 games this season. Last year in the big games that they really needed him, he came through and he was pretty much unstoppable. So Keenan Allen's my number five and the first guy off the board in round two. Then I have Mike Thomas, Michael Thomas of the New Orleans Saints. The only reason I have Keenan Allen over Michael Thomas, and Michael Thomas is actually going one spot ahead of Keenan Allen in regular ADP, is that I have Michael Thomas slightly below because I believe that the Saints are becoming more of a running football team. They have Alvin Kamara. They have Mark Ingram. Um, They were a very big running team last year. Drew Brees is having less to do in terms of carrying the football team, and that does affect Michael Thomas as well. I believe that the Saints have a better overall wide receiver core this season than they did last year. They did sign Cameron Meredith, who I think will take away the targets. They also uh, drafted a second round wide receiver. So that's going to take away the targets. And I think Ben Watson, it, it, it was, as long as he stays healthy, will be a better threat at tight end than what they've had recently. So that being said, Michael Thomas is still amazing. He's still pretty much a lock for 100 receptions. Uh, He has the most receptions in the first two seasons of an NFL career. So you know he's going to get targets. You know he's going to get receptions. I just think Keenan Allen is slightly more valuable to that offense. And that's the reason why I have him a little bit higher. But Michael Thomas is awesome, especially in PPR. And then you have AJ Green, who is probably a little bit more of a standard pick. If you're you're in standard and uh, Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen, A.J. Green are on the board. You might want to go with A.J. Green because he has more capability for scoring touchdowns. Obviously, he's one of the most consistent football players statistically that we've seen in the past like 20 years. Pretty much every single season he's ever had, he's had 1,000 yards, except for one where he was injured for like half the season, and he almost had, he had 900 yards. So, I mean, A.J. Green is a lock for 1,000 yards. 
He is probably going to have a better year this year because Andy Dalton has better pass protection, better offensive line. They brought in Cordy Glenn from Buffalo. They drafted a center. So that's very nice. I expect Joe Mixon to have a better season this year. Tyler Eifert should be back and healthy. So that's going to draw away attention from AJ Green. So I think AJ Green's going to have a great season this year. And I think he might have a little bit of a bounce back in terms of elite production. Um, But AJ Green is a guy that as opposed to Michael Thomas... Michael Thomas doesn't necessarily win you weeks, but he is super consistent. And AJ Green is more of a guy that's going to, every once in a while, put up like 200 yards and two touchdowns and just have a freak week for you. And that's the difference between picking AJ Green and Michael Thomas. But, But AJ Green, one week, will also have like that week where he has like 45 yards because he's on the Bengals and he's not on the Saints. So that's the reason why I have Michael Thomas and Keenan Allen ahead of of AJ Green, but AJ Green, if you're looking for more of the high upside sort of guy, then you probably want to go with AJ Green. And then we have Devontae Adams here at the end of the second round. I know that seems high for a lot of uh, casual fantasy players or uh, casual NFL fans, but Devontae Adams, of course, you don't have to deal with Jordy Nelson anymore. Um, Is Randall Cobb really still as good as he once was? We don't know. Jimmy Graham's there, but like he's the only guy that has great rapport with Aaron Rodgers is Devontae Adams. And Devontae Adams is a incredible threat in the red zone. He puts up like 10 touchdowns a season. Uh, he's pretty awesome. He needs that big yardage total, but I believe he's going to get it this year. And he really proved last year, even with Brett Hundley, that he is a really good receiver. He put up very solid numbers week in and week out, even with Brett Hundley. And imagine what he's going to do with Aaron Rodgers, one of the better quarterbacks and one of the best offenses in the league. So Devontae Adams, I like at the end of the second round. Um, I think he's just a guy that you know you can count on because he has a good quarterback, because he's on a good offense. Mike McCarthy's a good coach. Um, They're going to be a good team. He's going to score a lot. So he's just a guy that you know he's going to give you points. And he's also going to put up weeks where he has two to three touchdowns and he just completely wins you a week, especially if you're in standard leagues. And then we go to the third round. Um, The third round is getting into a little bit more of high upside, but sort of leaky floors in terms of we don't necessarily know where the floor is going to be for this player. But if they... If they do hit, then they're going to be really, really good for you. And that's basically the definition of Josh Gordon, who is my first receiver off the board in the third round. I love Josh Gordon as a player. I think he has the capability of being the best receiver in the NFL, which he was three seasons ago in 2014. Josh Gordon was the best receiver in the NFL. He had 1,600 yards with Jason Campbell, uh, Brandon Whedon, and Brian Hoyer throwing the ball. Uh, so, I mean, Josh Gordon's a freaking beast when he plays on the field. Last year, he only had five catchable deep targets last year when he came back for the Browns. All five of them were converted into over 100 yards and a couple touchdowns. So he's an excellent deep threat. He's a freakish runner. Like, he's one of the fastest players in the NFL. He's huge. He's basically as close as Julio Jones as you can get. He might even be a better athlete than Julio Jones. And that's saying a lot. So Josh Gordon, I believe in Tyrod Taylor as as at least a decent quarterback. I think he has a good deep ball. He'll be able to get Gordon the ball. I also believe in Todd Haley as an offensive coach. And I think he'll put him in position similarly to the way he put Antonio Brown in good positions to succeed. So I like Josh Gordon this year. I think he's actually kind of a value in the third round. When if, if Josh Gordon hits, he's a number one wide receiver, no doubt about it. So you're getting like a, a guy that could be the number one receiver in fantasy football in the third round. That's pretty good. Then you have T.Y. Hilton also in the third round, who's another guy that's proven that he can be one of the best receivers in the NFL. And that's why I have him here at the top of the third round. Now, it obviously depends on Andrew Luck. If Andrew Luck's not really ready to go, he really drops a lot. But if T.Y. Hilton is with Andrew Luck, you know he's going to put up like 1,300 plus yards receiving. And the thing about T.Y. Hilton this year is you don't really have any other receivers that Andrew Luck can throw to that he trusts. I mean, Grant is a decent guy that I like from Washington, but he doesn't have the rapport with Andrew Luck the way that T.Y. Hilton does. They're one of the best combinations in the NFL when they're both healthy, um, and they should have a good offense. Frank Reich is a good offensive coach, uh, should find new creative ways to get T.Y. Hilton open, get his speed, get him down the field. 
I like T.Y. Hilton as long as Andrew Luck is there to throw him the ball. Um, then we have Adam Thielen, who's my third receiver in the third round. I'm a believer in Adam Thielen. I think the talent is what we saw last year. He's an excellent slot receiver. Um, he played a lot from the slot last year, but he also kind of reminds me of like a younger Jordy Nelson, the way he can hit that deep ball. He made a lot of freakish catches last year in terms of guys all over him. He made some amazing catches and he has an upgrade at the quarterback position, Kirk Cousins. The one concern I have about him is Pat Shermer is no longer there, who kind of drew up a lot of creative ways to get Adam Thielen in good spots on good matchups. That is a little bit concerning, but I think that the quarterback makes up for it. The offense is going to be really good, and he is, to me, the number one receiver in this offense, which is a really good one. Then you have Allen Robinson, who's currently going in the middle of the fourth round. I believe he should be a third-round receiver because... I'm a big fan of Allen Robinson in terms of his talent. He, like Josh Gordon, talent-wise, is a top-tier wide receiver. If he's put on a good offense, which I believe he now is, with Matt Nagy, the former Kansas City offensive coordinator, now the head coach of Chicago, Mitch Trubisky, I think is going to have a breakout year. And he's Allen, Ro Allen Robinson is the number one target in this offense. He's going to be in a good passing offense. And you really look at the receivers of the Bears, and yeah, they upgraded the, you know, you have t uh, Gabriel, who it was the third receiver in Atlanta, and you have Anthony Miller, who's a rookie. So I feel like early on, especially, there's going to be a lot of targets for Allen Robinson. And I feel like Mitch Trubisky, it's going to be the go-to guy on third down, the go-to guy in the red zone, the big play guy. All these plays, all these situations are going to be Allen Robinson. So that's why I really like him in the third round. Uh, Doug Baldwin is currently going at the beginning of the third round. I'd probably draft him at the end of the third round because I, I don't really love the Seattle offense. But then as opposed to that, you still have Russell Wilson and you don't have anyone else that's going to catch the football. I mean, Jimmy Graham's gone. Uh, Paul Richardson's gone. The only other guy that's going to contend for targets really is uh, Tyler Lockett. Uh, so, I mean, Doug Baldwin is going to be that go-to guy for Russell Wilson. So he's he's more of a safe floor player. He'll occasionally get you a couple touchdowns, but that's pretty rare. Um, he's more of a, like a six to eight catch guy a game. Um, he's more of that slot Julian Edelman, Jarvis Landry type of guy, but he's on the higher end because he's the number one guy in this offense. And that's why I like Doug Baldwin still in the third round. I wouldn't draft him as high as 301 where he's currently being drafted. I would draft them probably more at the bottom just because of Seattle's offense and my projection for them as a team. But still, he's a solid wide receiver, knows how to get open, very savvy, and has great rapport with his quarterback. Then you have Amari Cooper, who's kind of disappointed owners for a couple of years. I mean, he's been good, but he hasn't been as great as we thought he would be. Um, I think this might finally be the year where he breaks out because John Gruden is now the head coach of the Raiders. He's known as a wide receiver coach. He's known as a uh, offensive coach. And I think Amari Cooper is going to be the number one guy in this offense. Also, Derek Carr was hurt last year, played a lot injured. So I think Amari Cooper is going to benefit from a healthy car, a better coach, a better team, a better offense. Offensive line should be better. Um, I think Amari Cooper's back to his normal weight where he was a little bit too heavy last year. So I like Amari Cooper to have more of a consistent season this year. And as long as he gives you a little bit more consistency, you're going to enjoy him in the third round. Larry Fitzgerald's the last guy in the third round. He's just super consistent. He's Larry Fritz freaking Fitzgerald. He's a Hall of Famer. Um, he always puts up 100 catches. He's that guy you want. Like, let's say you pick Josh Gordon early or late second round, and then you go... Uh, Fitzgerald early third, that would be a perfect combination because it's Mr. Consistent with Mr. Upside. Um, it's just the way you want to draft it. Like maybe you go Doug Baldwin with Josh Gordon or T.Y. Hilton with Doug Baldwin, Adam Thielen with Allen Robinson, whatever you want to do. I mean, but Fitzgerald is just that guy you want to pair with the guy that maybe has a little bit of questions, but if he delivers, he's huge for you because you know Fitz is going to give you a baseline of points and that's what he's there for. In round number four, I'm starting it off with Mike Evans. Mike Evans, I'm not going to be drafting Mike Evans this year just because I do, Jameis Winston is suspended. Fitzpatrick sucks. Uh, Mike Evans is a good player, but I can't draft him at his current price of uh, the late second round. I have him with a fourth round grade, so that basically means I'm never going to pick him. Because I don't know even if Jamin Winston comes back, is he going to be good or is he even going to be able to play? I mean, are the Bucks just going to sit him because he's an idiot? I don't know. 
So there's a lot of questions with the Bucs. I think they're going to suck as a team. So I don't really want any piece of them this year. Uh, Steph- Stephon Diggs is the next receiver in the fourth round. You could argue he's a third rounder um, because some people would say he's probably better than Adam Thielen, which I don't believe. But Stephon Diggs, he does have a little bit of injury questions. He's injured a little bit more than Adam Thielen, which is probably the difference for me. Um but I mean, Diggs when he's when he's on the field, he's solid. He's more of the deep threat receiver, more of the big play guy, as opposed to Thielen, who's more of the chip away t- sort of player. Um, but I mean, he's just a solid in the fourth round. You can't get much better than Stephon Diggs. Honestly, he's in a great offense. He's gonna put up good points for you. He's gonna have weeks that win you weeks. So it's solid. And same for Tyreek Hill. I mean, he has a third round ADP right now. I put him in the fourth round just because I don't know what Patrick Mahomes is going to be like yet. I don't know if Sammy Watkins is going to take away from his targets or not. So, I mean, I'll have to watch the preseason and see where he's at. I'm a huge fan of Tyreek Hill as a player. I just got to see if that translates to fantasy this season. But that's kind of a wait and see approach. I've been drafting Tyreek Hill, though, um, because people seem to be passing on him. And when he's in the fourth round, I'll take him because he's worth it. But in the third round, I'm not willing to pick him there. Uh, Golden Tate is going in the late fourth. I would pick him depending on my roster. Like again, Golden Tate is like a Fitzgerald. If you're going to get Josh Gordon or T.Y. Hilton in the third round, I wouldn't mind picking Golden Tate in the fourth. I mean, I think that's a solid combination right there. Golden Tate's consistent. I really like the Lions offense this year. Um, I definitely think it's going to be an upgrade from last year. And I think Golden Tate's going to be right at the center of it. Alshon Jeffrey, I think is kind of one of the lower end high potential guys. I really like what I saw from him in the playoffs last year, and he he was really good with Nick Foles. Um, it didn't translate as much with Carson Wentz for whatever reason, but I think he kind of carries over his momentum into this year, and I think he'll have a lot of really good games as long as he's on the field and healthy, and I think he's kind of been trusted now as the go-to guy in this offense at receiver, so I like Alshon Jeffrey. I picked him a lot as well because he slid into the fifth round where I've been able to snag him. But uh, fourth round, I have him as a grade. Juju Smith-Schuster is my last guy in the fourth round. I really like Juju in the fourth round. Um, I know he's the second receiver on the team. But, I mean, Martavis Bryant's gone. Uh, There's still questions about Le'Veon Bell's contract. And I think that Juju Smith-Schuster is legit as a talent. And this offense can has enough targets to go around, enough balls to go around, that they can feed two receivers well enough. So I like him in the fourth round. I think he has potential there. Fifth round, starting off with Demarius Thomas. He's currently going in the fourth round. I just think I'm not quite trusting the Case Keenum Denver situation yet. I think that Demarius is taking a slight step back, but I, I think that with Case there, it might solidify the Denver passing game just enough for him to be a good option in fantasy. And Demarius is another guy like Golden Tate, Larry Fitzgerald, that's going to get you consistent points. Not going to win you a week really ever, but he's going to put up like eight receptions a game for 80 plus yards, especially in PPR. He's very solid. Um, Jarvis Landry is the very same thing. This is a guy that's gone over 100 receptions multiple times in his career. He is on a new team, but I expect him to get a lot of receptions. He's going to be a third down target for Tyrod Taylor. Um, and I think he's just going to be very solid. And obviously he's, he's a talent more so than Josh Gordon that translates to the type of receivers that, uh, Todd Haley had in Pittsburgh, like Antonio Brown, Jarvis Landry's kind of like a worse version of him. So (laughs) he'll find ways to get him open. Um, Brandon Cooks is going in the fifth round. Uh, I would probably take him in the fifth round considering some of the other receivers going there. Um, But I'm not in love with Brandon Cooks this year just because the Rams were really inconsistent on who they were targeting last year at receiver. I'm not a huge fan of Jared Goff, but obviously the offense is awesome. Sean Sean McVay is great. It runs through Todd Gurley, though, which leaves the receivers kind of a matchup sort of thing. Like sometimes Brandon Cooks will be amazing for you because he'll, he'll really kill bad secondaries deep and win you a week. But then occasionally he'll have a bad game and not really put up a lot of yards or touchdowns. So Cooks is one of those guys that, especially if you're in best ball, he might not be a bad pick. But if you're like in regular drafts, um, you want to pair him up with one of these more consistent guys like a Golden Tate. Uh, Corey Davis, sixth round. I would pick him in the fifth round. I think he's going to be a beast for the Titans this year. I think he's going to be their number one guy. I could see Corey Davis being as good as a uh, 10 touchdown player. 
Um, I think he's by far the best receiver on the Titans, and I think he has potential to put up numbers in the fifth round for you. Marvin Jones is the late fifth round, maybe the sixth round, but I like Matt Stafford. I like the Lions offense. Same thing I said about Golden Tate. Marvin Jones is more of the deep threat guy, and that's why I don't trust him quite as much, but he's still really good and had a really great season for you last year, so I think he's going to put up another one this year. Round six, Will Fuller. Um, he's currently going late sixth round. I would pick him early sixth round because I think Will Fuller, is, as long as Deshaun Watson's on the field, he's going to prove to be awesome for you um, because he is the number two target in the Texans by far. I mean, there's nobody behind him, really. Kiki Kote is a rookie receiver coming, coming in, but I mean... They don't have a tight end. Their running backs don't really catch the ball much. Will Fuller is a really electric receiver who, when Watson was on the field last year, he put up big numbers, so I like him. Sammy Watkins, I've never been a fan of Sammy Watkins, um, really since his rookie year where he was decent, but then he kind of fallen, he's fallen off ever since. Um, he's in the sixth round right now. Considering the other receivers going there, I don't mind you picking him there. Um, and I got to see if Mahomes favors him over Tyreek Hill. If that's the case, he might be a steal. But I don't love Sammy Watkins just because I didn't see much from him in LA last year on a really good offense. And they didn't keep him around. They, they went with Brandon Cooks instead. So I'm not completely in love with Sammy Watkins. But I mean, I understand why some people would like him and would want to pick him. Then you go Pierre Garçon, who's kind of a sneaky guy. I have him in the sixth. He's going in the seventh. I just think Kyle Shanahan's offense, he loves Pierre Garçon. He's going to get a lot of catches. In PPR, he's just going to be a really good, solid floor guy. He's not going to put up a ton of touchdowns, but he's going to get a lot of catches, and he's going to be consistent, and he's going to be a guy that I want on my team if I have a lot of high upside guys already. Uh, same with Emmanuel Sanders. I think Emmanuel Sanders could be a better value than Demarius Thomas. I think personally he's a better receiver. He just doesn't get as much work or targets as Demarius. Um, but I think Sanders is going to have a bounce back year this year, and I really like him in the sixth round. Uh, Julian Edelman. Uh, I mean, Julian Edelman, he is suspended for the f first few weeks, but I think once he comes back, he's going to be a target machine, third down, go-to guy. Uh, he's, he's really good. I've picked Edelman a lot so far in drafts because people seem to be passing him even in the sixth round, which I'm super happy to pick him in the seventh because Edelman's sort of that guy that I've been picking um, as my third or fourth receiver. If I've picked like, so far I've picked, let's say, uh, Gordon, Hill, and I don't know, somebody else. And then it's, let's say I have Hill and Gordon already. Those are two guys that are pretty highly like they're rather going to go boom or they're going to go bust. And with Edelman, I know when he comes back, I'm going to get a solid player. I'm going to get a guy that's going to contribute every week. He's going to put up a good baseline for you. He's going to be consistent. He's like a Fitzgerald in that way. And that's why I like Edelman on my rosters. Um, so that's what that's where I would pick him as your third receiver, fourth receiver. If you can get him as your fourth, that's money. If you can get him as your third, that's not bad either. Um, round seven. Chris Hogan currently going in the fifth round. I have him going in the seventh. That's too high, fifth round. I just don't believe Chris Hogan is that good to go in the fifth round. I mean, he has a great opportunity this year. He's put up huge games. Um, and I, I would pick him in the seventh, obviously. But like fifth round is just too rich. And I don't think I'll ever be picking Chris Hogan this year just because he's going too high. Um, and that's based largely off the first four weeks. But I mean, when it's the first four weeks... That's not really when you want your receivers going off. You want them going off when you're in the playoffs. You don't want them going off in the first four weeks. And then once Edelman's back, I think he goes back to more of his old role, although he'll have more of the Brandon Cooks role a little bit more this year. I just don't see the high upside that some other people do see in Chris Hogan. Uh, Jamison Crowder in the seventh round, I really like this year. Um, Alex Smith loves this type of receiver. He is their best receiver on the team. He's the number one target. And Jordan Reed's hurt a lot, and Jamison Crowder's just going to capitalize off that and have a really good season. Marquise Goodwin, I've picked a lot um, because he's slid a lot, but I think Marquise Goodwin is the perfect receiver for San Fran's offense. He gets deep really well. Jimmy has a pretty good deep ball, um, and I like the 49ers offense. Uh, Robbie Anderson in the ninth round, same thing with Goodwin. He's a good deep ball receiver. He had a 1,000-yard season last year. 
I think he's going way too late in the ninth round. I'd pick him in the seventh round. He has great potential. It doesn't matter who the quarterback is. It didn't matter last year. It won't matter this year. The only issues with Anderson is off the field, not on the field. That's the only thing you need to pay attention to. Michael Crabtree, he's going in the sixth round. I'd pick him in the seventh. Um, I just don't like the Ravens offense. I don't like Joe Flacco. But Crabtree is a guy that's going to eat up a lot of catches, and those are the sort of receivers that Flacco does like, so I understand why somebody would pick him. He's also a good, solid floor receiver like Edelman, Sanders, those sort of guys. Um, In the eighth round, I start off with Randall Cobb. Um, Randall Cobb's going to be the number two receiver for Green Bay this year. You could do much worse there in the eighth round, so uh, Cobb could have a bounce back here. Maybe if Cobb gets his legs back, he could be back to a thousand yard range this year in green bay uh cooper cup is a guy i really like Uh, i think he's gonna be the number one like go-to guy in the red zone and in the uh third on third down for the rams jared goff really likes him he's a good slot receiver he's very savvy and sean McVay knows how to get him open uh devin funches is going in the eighth round i've also picked him in the eighth round He played really well for Cam Newton last year. He was their number one target. I'm not quite sold that DJ Moore is going to automatically assume that role. So I feel like Devin Funches is sort of being a little bit of a steal right now in fantasy drafts. Jordy Nelson in the ninth round. Um, I would pick him in the eighth because I still believe in Jordy Nelson's talent. I don't think he's quite done yet. And I think Jordy Nelson is that type of receiver like we've seen from Fitzgerald. Even if his speed is a little bit diminished, even if his... His physical ability is a little bit diminished. He's so savvy, such a good route runner, such a smart player that he can move to the slot and still pick up a lot of receptions. So I think Jordy Nelson's great, um, especially with John Gruden, who loves this guy. Then you have Sterling Shepard, who's going in the 10th. I'd pick in the 8th. He's the number two receiver for the Giants. Very talented guy. Slot receiver in PPR leagues, very valuable. And Eli likes him. Uh, Alan Hearns, ninth round, number one receiver for the Dallas Cowboys. I'd pick him in the eighth round. I think he's the most talented receiver on the Cowboys. He's probably going to get the most catches, probably the most touchdowns. Um, Dallas doesn't have a bad offense. They need to throw somebody the ball. Maybe it's Alan Hearns. Calvin Benjamin, number one receiver for the Bills. He's going in the te- late tenth round. That's absolutely nuts. I'd pick him in the eighth round. He's a very talented receiver uh, in terms of touchdowns. And I think he's by far the best receiver on the Bills. There's nobody else. Somebody has to catch the ball. Same thing for Alan Hearns. Robert Woods, he's going in the late eighth. I haven't really picked him often because they have so many other guys. But Robert Woods is a good player. um, And he was kind of sneaky good at times last year. Had some big games. And he'll be utilized the same way this year uh, in the late eighth. And then you have the ninth round. I have currently Mike Williams of the Chargers. Didn't play last year really at all. Um, but this year he was drafted high for a reason. I think he's going to break out this year as the number two receiver on the chargers. And I think he'll be the guy to replace Hunter Henry's value in the red zone. He's a big target. That's where Deshaun Watson would find him. And I think that's where Phillip rivers will Devonte Parker. I've never been a huge fan of, but I'm willing to pick him in the ninth round. He is a very, a very talented guy in terms of physical ability. There's nobody really else in Miami and Tannehill did like him better than Cutler. Uh, Rashard Matthews going in the 11th round has had better seasons than that. I don't understand why he's valued in the 11th round. I think with the new coach there um, on offense, I think that's really going to upgrade the Titans offense passing wise, especially Mariota should be better. Uh, Corey Davis should be better. Delaney Walker should be better. And Rashard Matthews, that means he'll be better as well. He's going in the 11th. I'd pick him in the late 9th. DJ Moore going in the ninth. I, I'd pick in the ninth. I think he's the number one receiver in the in the real draft this year. I think that's warranted. He has Cam Newton. Um, he is talented. He's not necessarily a guy that's like out of this world, like freak athleticism, but like he kind of reminds you of Steve Smith. And Steve Smith even said himself that he reminds him of himself. So I mean, if he's as good as Steve Smith, it's willing. I'm willing to pick him in the ninth round. So that's the that's the end for the wide receiver rankings in terms of each round. Now the rest of the draft, I'm just going to go quickly over some guys. Quincy Anunwa was a guy I really liked last year. He got hurt last year, and he's back for the Jets. He could even assume maybe the first role on their depth chart, but I assume that will be Robbie Anderson. If not, he'll be the number two receiver. He has a lot of talent, and I like him. Uh, Nelson Aguilar is a solid floor guy that if you need to pick up occasionally or draft late in the rounds, you know he's going to have some good weeks 
for the Eagles. They're, that's a good offense. Kenny Stills was the best receiver on Miami last year. Could still be that way this year. Uh, Paul Richardson got signed to Washington for a big contract for a reason. Could be an interesting pick there late in rounds um, with Alex Smith at quarterback. Albert Wilson, I really like late in rounds. He's almost going undrafted. He, to me, is going to be the best go-to guy for Miami in the slot. He, somebody needs to replace Jarvis Landry. I think it'll be Albert Wilson and not Danny Amendola. Um, then you have uh, Christian Kirk, one of the rookies from Arizona. Arizona, I mean, J.J. Nelson. Christian Kirk's better than him. They're already hearing about um, some raving reports from Arizona about Christian Kirk. He's very talented and uh, very athletic, So and he's speedy, so he can go down the field. I think Sam Bradford will like him, and uh, somebody else got to catch it other than Larry. So, I mean, Christian Kirk could be that guy. And I'm willing to pick a, a, a rookie over some of these other guys, to be honest, because I already know like some of these other guys. I'm rather pick a rookie just because maybe the rookie's a stud. Who knows? Mohamed Sanu, Calvin Ridley are going in the same range. Those Ridley, I would probably slightly favor over Sanu, to be honest, because maybe Ridley is a rookie. He was a first rounder, had great route running ability. Maybe he breaks out. Who knows? Sanu, I, uh, Sanu, I know, is going to be a solid fill-in every once in a while, but not necessarily going to be a go-to guy for you. Cameron Meredith, I have picked at the end of drafts because I believe in his talent and on the Saints offense. You can't get much better than Sean Payton and Drew Brees. Deshaun Jackson is another guy you could pick. I like in best ball drafts because every once in a while he'll have really good games where he gets like 90 yards, a touchdown or whatever. But again, I don't love the Bucks, so I'm not really going to be picking him regularly in normal drafts. Marquise Lee is another guy who's the number one receiver for the Jaguars. Somebody's got to catch the ball. Martavis Bryant is another guy that could be like Deshaun Jackson. Occasionally for the Raiders, he'll go off. Anthony Miller is a big time rookie that I love this year. He is might be the rookie that you want to draft at this wide receiver position. And I've gotten him almost every single best ball draft I've been in because I think he's going to be awesome and the slot receiver for the uh, Chicago Bears. So those are the receivers this year in fantasy football. I hope you guys enjoyed this ranking video of the receivers, my draft board. If you agree or disagree, leave the comments below. If you have any questions for me, make sure you leave those in the comment section below as well. Uh, it's been Mitch of the Bottom Line View. If you enjoyed, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more fantasy football. Next up will be the quarterback rankings. If you haven't already checked out the running back rankings, do that for yourself as well. Um, and go check out, go download um, the link. You can download it, print it out, and use it at your drafts. All right, guys, peace out.